Uh, for you, I come and, and he gives us eternal life. Do you notice as we, we read today just how many times the kingdom of heaven, at least three times in the gospel, comes up today. The kingdom of heaven and, and what these four compromands this morning, the, as they confess their faith, what they get to look forward to, surrounded by this the cloud of witnesses, not just here, uh, but through the testimony, testimony of the saints and the word of God this morning as well. As I said, we'll, we'll use the uh, bulletins for the order of our worship. I invite you to join in singing the opening hymn, Father God of Grace, you and us. <laughs> Amen. 
that's great. Lord God, you know that we are surrounded by many dangers and that we often stumble and fall. Strengthen us in body and mind and bring us safely through all temptations through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. <laughs> The first lesson appointed for today is taken from the Old Testament prophet Zephaniah chapter 2 and 3. <coughs> Zephaniah writes, Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. On that day, you, Jerusalem, will not be put to shame for all the wrongs you have done to me, because I will remove from you your arrogant boasters. Never again will you be haughty on my holy hill, but I will leave within you the meek and humble. The remnants of Israel will trust in the name of the Lord. They will do no wrong. They will tell no lies. A deceitful tongue will not be found in their mouths. They will eat and lie down and no one will make them afraid. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson taken from Hebrews chapter 10. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. This also is the word of the Lord. As is our tradition, I invite you to stand in honor of the words and works of Jesus. The Gospel today from Matthew chapter 5. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and began, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated, and at this time I invite the children to come up here for the children's message. Good. I'm glad I'm having you sit up here. I see you <coughs> sit with some of the, the big kids up here whose parents probably think that was just yesterday that they were up here as well. Um, and, and what I want you to think about today, actually, before I, I pull that up, I want you to complete this sentence, or at least in your mind, if not out loud. I want you to complete uh, this phrase, I'm happy when, dot, dot, dot. Can you think of things that make you happy? Situations that make you happy. I am happy when. You think of something? Do you want to say out loud anything? I'm happy when I'm with animals. You're happy when you, we got the animal lover Lorelai here. Yeah, I'm happy when I'm hanging with animals. Okay. What else? Goes the big kids say too. I'm happy when I'm with Jesus. Jesus. Oh, you're the same when you think your dad wants to you. <laughs> Good one. A different word for happy, a synonym for happy is who are my readers up here? Joy. Joy. I used to have a, a teacher when I was in eighth grade, so just a, a little older, about a year older, maybe than Madison, a little younger than 
Yeah, ben. Benjamin. I had a teacher, I went to a Christian school, a Christian day school, and, and I had a teacher that had uh, this this word up on the board or up on, uh, on the wall, and it was broken down. It was going up and down, J-O-Y, and then there was a word with each letter. It said, Jesus first, others second, and you last. That, that's what, that's what Jesus is reminding us today in the gospel lesson, the, the lesson that I just read, the story that I just read. There Jesus is going up on the mountain, and there below him are crowds of people, and those crowds of people, there's sick people. There's people that had just lost someone, and they're really sad. And so it wouldn't sound like Jesus is saying, joy is yours. When he says blessed, you can think joy is yours. Happy are the people who mourn, who grieve. Because, he says, theirs will be eternal life. So you think of some of the, some of the sad times, the, the unhappy times of life. So you, you maybe completed the sentence in your mind, I am happy when, we could do another one, I am sad when. And there's situations in life that make us sad, that hurt our hearts. And that's, that's understandable because God made this world for us to never go through broken hearts. He, he never wanted this world for us to have to say goodbye to loved ones, for our hearts to never be sad over sin, for us to never never sin. But that's that's not the reality. That's not what really happened in this world. There was sin. There was death. In other words, there were sad things that break our hearts, and our God wasn't happy about that, so he did something about it. Do you know what he did? He put that Y. Remember what the Y was? You. Guess what Jesus did? He put you first. Right? That's what God so loved the world. God so loved you. God so loved others. He so loved his people that Jesus put himself last. Because he wanted you right beside him. Today, Jesus, in his most famous sermon, he says, great, he doesn't say great could be your reward in heaven. He doesn't say great maybe is your reward in heaven. He says, great is your reward in heaven. And so now we can go back to this and say, yeah, it is true. When I'm, when I'm thinking about Jesus and the gift he's given me of heaven, of eternal life in heaven where our hearts are made whole. There's no more death, no more sin, no more sadness. He, he gives us this joy now. And, and that's more important than anything else in this world, the joy that Jesus gives us. And, and so if you take nothing else away from this, that's the one, that's the letter I want you to take away, is that Jesus came to give you heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, on, on this special day when uh, we're thinking about some of us having learned and, and studied the Bible and seeing just how much you loved us, are, are preparing for the, the opportunity to, to go to Holy Communion soon, starting next week, we, we also thank you for all of the people that are here, including these souls that you have gathered right here as well. You, you invite the little children to come to you. You say, let the little children come to me because you love them so much. And so let these souls, let these minds and hearts find their joy above everything else in this world, above Disney, above the best food, above every joy and happiness that we find in this world. Help them to find their greatest joy that always lasts, that's always there, their joy in you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, my friends, you can have a seat, and we're going to continue with the hymn of the day.
adventure with, with putting it in the home, locating it in the home where too with affirmation. Uh, but one of the things I, I love the most is, is just the, the transparency, starting, especially I think in middle, middle school, that immediacy and transparency with being honest about questions. You know, sometimes teens are, are kind of known for that about um, skepticism and so, or being skeptics. And so that, that's a question I, I want to ask you and I want you to be thinking about this morning or if we had a pop quiz, an examination, maybe this would be my question then, is what is truth? What is truth? Well, that's, that's one of the things we, we get, we've been exploring and we've been looking at with, with God's word. And it's something that you're going to confess here in a few moments with when you confess, which we do every Sunday with the creeds. Today it's the apostles, the ancient apostles creed. And, and God calls on you today to, to hold on to that, hold on to that truth. Why? We see in the gospel because they're the words of eternal life. Three times the kingdom of heaven comes up. And, and he calls on you to hold on to the truth. And, and, and you confess, one of the things we confess is that Christ is coming back in the Apostles' Creed. And, and that would... That would send us with even more fear, even more sweaty palms, even more heart palpitations. And if I did say that, I'm going to give you this mic and we're going to have an examination this morning, is to know that, wow, Jesus is coming back. And the only reason that doesn't give you sweaty palms and uh, the palpitations in your hearts and, and make you very anxious is because the truth that you confess is that Jesus came the first time to make it all right. To make you all good with God, to give you peace, and and, and so that's one of the things that, that we we get to explore when Jesus says, Let the little children come to me, we start to see, whoa, it's not so much me holding on, not by my thinking or choosing, but it's really by God holding on to us all along and growing and understanding and appreciating God the Father's warm embrace his hold on us which it's not just coincidence that the baptismal font is up here today um, is, is a focal point in, in most church settings it's is to remind us that it, it, for some of us in some of our cases it was before you, you could even put a spoon into your mouth before you could even intellectually begin to understand anything that's going on up there before you could maybe even lift up your head. Some of your parents brought you to the baptismal fonts and there God uh, embraced you. There's just one of the moments through his word, through his water here, through his word connected with his water that he tells you Matthew or Madison or Benjamin or Blake fill in the blank. I have called you by name. You are mine. And so when we see, let us hold unswervingly, as the writer to Hebrews says, it's, it's really not been us. It's not us holding on. It's really us just growing more and more in our understanding. Oh, it's been God holding on to us all along. How he took hold of you. How he said from eternity, I love you. I have called you by name. Okay, so let's, let's hold on to the truth, but, but then I, I want you to, let's move forward a little bit, and, and I also want you to hold on to your support. So you, you're going to have challenges, and, and with holding on to truths, you've already had maybe things that you took as truths in your life. It, it goes through the fingertips like sand, think people that you thought, friends that you thought would always be there for you, loved ones maybe that you thought would always be there for you. <coughs> and you can see that, that it can be like sand going through your hands. And, and so that's for one why we hold on to a greater truth, a greater one who will never disappoint our God. And, and, and for that too, we have the church you get a hold on to your support is what God calls on us to do in the second lesson for today. 
And so you, you've had your challenges. You've had the, the maybe truths in your life, what you thought were truths of sand go through your fingertips, and, and I know you, you've got challenges right now. You're here still on this side of eternity. And I don't know what they're going to be, but I know you're, you're going to have challenges down the road, too. But what a beautiful thing it is. That, that is, in spite of all the ups and downs and the exciting times in your life, especially as you get into middle school and you're, you're getting into high school and maybe you get into college and you, and you make new friends, what a beautiful thing it is at the same time that God has given you this support. And so this is when maybe you can start to look around you. And maybe I'll direct your, your eyes first. It's to the cross because that, that's what ultimately unites us. It's Jesus. It's, it's his love. And, and then it's through him that he gives us this support, this church, which is looks like an upside-down boat, right? There's, that's the idea that Jesus is at the head of this boat. And, and now you look at your fellow confirmants. You've been hanging out with one another for quite a few years because we started this before COVID. We did some of this online. It's been some pauses, some false starts, but you got to know one another. And so I want you to think about just how different, I know each one of you is so different and unique, but that's what, that's how you're connected, is through Jesus. And so you look at your fellow confirmants here this morning, and that, that for one is your support. Hold on to your support. Today in Hebrews, the writer says, let us not give up supporting one another, gathering with one another. And, and I don't think anyone ever gets up on a Monday morning after going to a Sunday service, gets up on a Monday morning and says, you know what, I'm not going to go to church anymore. That typically isn't how it happens. Usually, more often how it happens, it's it's a gradual thing. And maybe it's a gradual thing. Part of that is seeing, you know what, my fellow peers, my fellow confidants are coming. Maybe I'm going to start not gathering, not supporting one another, not spurring one another on as well. But I want you to keep looking around you. This is when maybe it, you start to get nervous and, and you see that there's a lot of faces here that are going to be watching in a few moments while you take your stand up here. But there, these faces aren't here waiting for you to, to slip up on some words. They're here to support you, right? This is this is your support. It, you got some family members here for one. Maybe there's some grandparents here, some aunties, some uncles, your parents, brothers and sisters. That Those are people that God has given you in your life. You got, you got some congregation members that love you dearly. You got a pastor, spiritual care team members, some leaders here, that some musicians here that are here not, to, not hoping you fall on your face. And I'm hoping to point their finger at you at any time, but to spur you on, to, to shower you with love, to encourage you. And so, so don't give up meeting here. And, and likewise, you're encouraging them too as they see you here. And now, you know, we, we've been doing this instruction, and, and one of the, the main purposes of it is to, to have this opportunity to, to come up here for communion, and we call them communion tables. And the understanding is that, that that table continues. We're here, you're, you're united with your family in faith, but that that table continues. One of the songs we often sing before, the words of institution, and I, I say the words with all the saints on earth. But do you know where all this, the, the most saints are right now? The hosts of heaven. You got it. Where that communion table continues with all the saints, with all the people, including a, a dear Loved one, you maybe didn't even weren't aware of it, how much she prays for the young people. Miss Sherry prays for you, as, and God still continues to hear and answer those prayers. The prayers of the hosts, the saints that have gone on before us. And, and so that's the encouragement to, to hold on to that support. And, and so we've got this, this table up here, and one of the, one of the reasons we, we wait for that is because Paul calls on us to you. To, to examine ourselves. And, and we examine ourselves not by saying, I'm, I'm so good, I'm so ready for this, I've been 
good enough, God, that I'm ready to come to communion. It, it's actually the opposite, as you know. Right? It's that I'm a sinner apart from Christ, and, and I need this. I needed God to become flesh, to become one of us. And, and here at communion, then, there is no hiding. As I say, this is for you. There's no hiding behind anybody here at church when Jesus comes to you and says, Blake, this is for you. Benjamin, this is for you. Madison, this is for you. Matthew, this is for you. For the forgiveness of your sins. And, and so that, that's God's encouragement for us. So to hold on, to hang in there, first of all, to hold on to the truth. And so hold on to that support. I'll, I'll share with you the lesson from Hebrews one more time. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Amen. We'll continue with the hymn that reflects that as well. He will hold me fast. <laughs>
and where you just stand for the prayer of the church. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling and sharing this, our, our sister in Christ, to the knowledge of your Son and to the Holy Fellowship of his church. We thank you for keeping Jerry in faith through your word and sacraments and, and for taking her now to your heavenly rest. Strengthen our faith in Christ so that in all things we may grow up in him who is our head and cheerfully await the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, source of all mercy and giver of all comfort, deal graciously, have mercy on us, we pray with with us who mourn, that casting all our sorrow on you, we may know the consolation of your love through your Son, Jesus Christ. O most loving Father, you want us to give thanks for all things, to fear nothing except losing you, and to lay all our cares on you, knowing that you care for us. Grant that the clouds in this mortal life may not hide from us the light of your immortal love shown to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. With honor and affection, we remember, O everlasting God, those who have gone before us. Keep us united with them through faith and love toward you, that hereafter we may enter into your presence and be numbered with those who serve you and look upon your face in glory everlasting through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to continue with the, the confession of faith. You see in the bulletin, you have the Sacrament of Holy Baptism and Sacrament of Holy Communion portions taken from Luther's Small Catechism. Uh, those are those can be for your reference. We won't confess or we won't say those, speak those together this morning. Uh, but I do invite you to show your unity in the one true faith by using the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. But the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> and at this time, I, I do invite Matthew and Madison and Dan and Blake, you can come right up here. <coughs> you keep your bullets in, too. Maybe just for the members here, you can face me if, you, if you'd rather not, because I'll, I'll be asking you questions, too, um, for now, at least. This is where you can take heart, though, because this isn't about just a personal conviction. It's not just about uh, a personal feeling. But one of, the, one of the things we do in confirmation is to see, you know, from the moment of our baptism, from the moment of our faith that working through his work, it, it's really just growing and understanding that, uh, in the fancy Latin, ex nos, outside of us, the aspect that we're not looking, we're not searching inside of ourselves, some subjective feeling or experience or conviction, but we're looking at constantly what Christ has done for us, Christ for us. And, and this is a, an opportunity to enjoy, uh, proclaim those those promises back to God as well as we confess our, our faith. Um, so first of all, my dear young friends, when you were baptized, your gracious Lord forgave all your sins and covered you with a robe of Christ's righteousness. That's one of the reasons I, I wear a robe typically at church to remind us that, that Christ has covered us in his robe of righteousness. Through the water and word, he created faith in your hearts and adopted you into the family of believers. As you matured and heard and studied scriptures, the Holy Spirit works where he promises, doesn't he? He, he enlightens your minds, he preserves you as, as children of God. You have expressed the desire to confess the truths you believe before your Savior for your family and friends and, and this congregation. You are ready to say with St. Paul, I believe, therefore I have spoken. You have learned to examine your thoughts, words, and actions in the light of God's law 
and you have experienced the comfort of forgiveness in the Savior's gospel. With this preparation, you are eager to receive the Savior's very body, miraculously, sacramentally, based on his word, body and blood in the sacrament. As we worship with you this day, we are filled with joy as we see how the Lord has grown your faith and love. We are bringing our prayers to the Savior's throne of grace and imploring him to keep you faithful to him and to his word until you join us and all believers in the glories of heaven. And so now I, I ask each of you and, and also collectively, are you ready and willing to confess your faith before the triune God and those who are worshiping with you today? If so, then answer, I am. Do you believe in God the Father? And then you can use you can use the apostle screen for this. So I'll ask you again. <laughs> so this time I'm looking for an answer. <laughs> Do you believe in God the Father? Yes. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day that he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Do you reject the, the evil one, the devil, along with all his lies and empty promises? If so, then say, I do reject him. I do reject him. Do you believe in all the books of the Bible, that they're the inspired and inerrant word of God? If so, then say, I do. Do you believe that the teachings of the Lutheran Church, as you have learned to know them from Luther's small catechism, are faithful and true to the Word of God, and say, I do? Is it your sincere prayer and desire to remain faithful to your Lord Jesus and His Word all the days of your life? If so, then answer, yes, and I ask God to help me. Yes, and I ask God to help me. Is it your sincere prayer and desire to live a life that pleases God? to value his word and sacraments, and to witness to your Savior wherever you go? If so, then answer, yes, and I ask God to help me. Yes, and I ask God to help me. Friends in Christ, the word of God urges us to pray for one another, and especially for the little ones and the youth of the church. On this special day, it is fitting that we bring our prayers before God, firmly believing that he alone is able to strengthen us by the power of the Holy Spirit, and keep us faithful to the Savior all the days of our lives. And so, let us pray. Gracious Father, you created faith in the hearts of these young people and gave them new birth as members of your family. Help them remember their faith that what you have done every day and find comfort in your promise that you will never leave them or forsake them. Give them strength to put down and drown the sinful nature that lives within us so that each day their faith may may triumph in their living and loving and in their words and actions. Lead these, these uh, young ones to, to see and believe that in the word of the gospel they find forgiveness for their sins and relief for their guilt. Use the remembrance of your commandments to drive them to the comfort of the gospel and then to guide them as they live for you and others. Protect them from the evil, from sin, death, and the devil. When, when they're tempted to be careless with the word and sacrament to make plans for their, this life and not for the life to come, the temptations to, to make plans for this life and not for the life to come, or to find popular theories more appealing than your truth. Empower them by the gospel of your Son to live in this world with kindness and humility and patience, that others may see their good works and glorify their Father in heaven. Help us, to, to provide fitting examples of your love and faithfulness to your word and sacraments. Let us to encourage and admonish them in wisdom and love, even after they have left our homes and made new homes for themselves. When the end comes and we all stand before, before our God, have compassion on us, despite our sins, and accept us to eternal dwellers in your royal rooms through the merits of Jesus our Savior, who became sin for us, so that in him 
we might become the righteousness of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now I invite you to, to pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And I'll, I'll invite each one of you to come forward to receive a blessing of, from the Lord and a word of his encouragement from scriptures. In, in your cases, words that you chose as well. Blake Barrett, Joshua 1 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Blake. God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, give you his Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, of grace and prayer, of power and strength, of sanctification and the fear of God. Matthew, I'll go in alphabetical order. Matthew, shows a verse from Matthew, the Gospel writer Matthew. Enter through the narrow gates, for wide is the gate, broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Matthew, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God our Father, who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope, may he encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and work. And Madison, from Isaiah chapter 41. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The Father in heaven, Madison, Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, renew and increase in you the gift of the Holy Spirit for your strengthening in faith, your growth in grace, your patience in suffering, and for the blessed hope of eternal life. Then, last but not least, Matthew 28, Jesus commands, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded. Benjamin, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, and keep you blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You can stay up here, you can keep standing, and I'll invite the congregation to stand at this time. As you receive the name and blessing that God has been putting on his people for some 35 years, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We'll continue with the closing. <laughs>